lovely to be here. They let me host it. <laughs> what were they thinking? So, yes. I was so excited about hosting this. I, could, I was trying to be all kind of laid back and cool about it, but I was like, I'm hosting it, my life! <laughs> so excited. I wish I was laid back. I've always wanted to be laid back. I've never been laid back. All my life, I've wanted to be a laid back person. I've worked really fucking hard, actually, on being a laid back <laughs> And I'm not, I'm just not naturally good at it. And I have worked on it. I've read loads of books on it. How to be laid back, laid back for idiots, juice your way to being laid back, lean into being laid back. I read all of them. I took notes. <laughs> when I meet laid back people, I'm very interrogative with them. I don't want to miss a learning opportunity. I'm like, how are you so laid back then, mate? Why are you so laid back? <laughs> mm? Why do you seem to not give a shit about anything at all then? <laughs> mm? You do have to check that they are laid back and not depressed, because it is quite... Um... <laughs> It's quite easy, isn't it, to project things onto quiet people. <laughs> I've tried loads of stuff. I've tried colouring in, I've tried adult colouring in. That's the thing now, isn't it? Adult colouring in. It's the zeitgeist I didn't see coming, the old adult colouring in movement. I don't know if you've been to Smith's lately, whole aisles of adult colouring in books. And for the uninitiated, it's just colouring in. <laughs> it's not adult colouring in. People aren't sat at home shading labia. <laughs> it's just jungles and cats, wildlife. People have, over the years, now and then for Christmases and birthdays, people have bought me the colouring in books, right? Possibly to chill me out. And I always show willing, I'll start them. I'm like, go on then, I'll have a little colouring. And very early into the process, I'm like, oh, fuck this, I've got shit to do. <laughs> when you're fitting in, colouring in. <laughs> I've never looked at my life and thought, yeah, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at being alive. I've I got it, Nick, mate. I, I've done all the housework. That's all done. You can check that. And the kids seem fine. They're not Googling porn. <laughs> and I'm fit and healthy. I've done all the personal hygiene. And I've finished the internet now. Finished! <laughs> and I've read all the books. And the world's in great nick. I'm of no use out there. So what shall I do now? <laughs> I'll have a cheeky little colour in, I reckon. <laughs> I'll have a little cheeky little colour in in me time. <laughs> I worry about it. I, I overthink it. I, what do people do with them colouring in books when they finish them? Do they bin them? Do they keep them? Do they chuck them in the bin? Do they show them to their mates when they come round for a cup of tea? <laughs> Do you want to see my colouring in? Come and see all my colouring in. All my colouring in. All my colouring in books here. This is jungles, this is lions. Well, it was all cats, big cats, mate, big cats. This is trees, this is... Well, I was having a breakdown there, if I'm honest, when I did the cats. <laughs> oh, don't go, don't go! <laughs> I worry that it's the thin end of a regression wedge that we should all be keeping an eye on as a society. What next? People doing Play-Doh at dinner parties. <laughs> Don't talk to Judith. She's quite involved in her play though these days. <laughs> no one gives a shit about me. <laughs> no one ever asks me about me, do they? Well, <laughs> I'm going to make a cat. <laughs> I've tried all sorts. I've got a dog, because I read an article that if you get a dog, it chills you out. Doesn't really, does it? Got all the same problems, but with a dog. Got a dog now. <laughs> Got to walk it now. <laughs> got to walk the dog. And I, oh, I don't know if any of you have got a dog, but dog walkers are boring people, aren't they? Boring people. <laughs> and they always want to chat on a dog walk. And you're like, oh, mate, I've got a podcast on the go here. You're going to have to raise your game. <laughs> but they want to talk. They want to chat. I can't think of anything to chat about on a dog walk with a dog walk. I've got nothing in common with this person other than we've both got a dog and we're in this park. I always think it shouldn't take long, this dog chat. Oh, is it a girl dog or a boy dog? What breed is it? Bye then, bye bye, bye. <laughs> but they want to talk to you. They're like, oh, isn't it nice having a dog? Isn't it nice having a dog? It's like having a little mate, isn't it, having a little dog? No, it's not like having a little mate. Oh, hello, have you met my new mate? Who's shit I pick up? <laughs> That's a weird friendship. <laughs> if you ask me, that is a weird friendship. My little mate, who's very codependent, and I've got a little warm turd in my coat pocket. <laughs> Never had any friendships like that in my life, but, well, one in the early 90s, but I did have quite low self-esteem. <laughs> at that time. So I do worry sometimes that not being laid back is, like, part of living in London. I live in London, 
lived in London all my life. I always think, oh, if I moved away, maybe I could be more laid back. London's quite intense, isn't it? It's quite intense. It's quite in your face. <laughs> Pigeons. <laughs> right it's your face most days. And I've never lived anywhere else. I always think, oh, if I moved to the countryside, I might be sort of more laid back. I don't know what goes on in the countryside, if I'm honest. Apple bobbing, dogging. I don't really... <laughs> I haven't properly researched it. <laughs> but I like the idea of it. Or I'd like to live abroad. Like, the only time I've ever spent any length of time abroad was last year I went to LA, right? And I... I mean, I was so excited to be there. I had to go there for a job, so I was there for six weeks. And I think part of the reason why I liked it was because I got to be an outsider, because that's sometimes quite a nice thing, isn't it, to be exotic? Because when you're from the place you live in, the place you're from, you're not the exotic one. So I was quite excited to be exotic for a little while. I reinvented myself a little bit, because I knew what they liked. They liked the Brits out there in LA. So I was like, right, I'm going to cre create this sort of cartoon cockney for myself. You should have heard me. I was like, oh, I'm going to write to an eight. Look at me old pony jam jar. I might be petting Mick all over me peck and right. <laughs> I'm from Middlesex. <laughs> don't really talk like that there, but uh, I committed to it. I was like, oh, the septic tanks let this shit up. So, <laughs> and while I was there, I was quite laid back because I suppose, you know, it's a different lifestyle out there. It's sunny all the time. Everyone's very health conscious. So I got quite into it. Everyone's like doing yoga and, you know, drinking kale juice and enjoying the sun, being by the ocean. And I was like, oh my God, I could be, I could be quite laid back here. People are cool. They're super cool. They dress really funky. People wear hats. <laughs> They're not being ironic. <laughs> I mean, if you wear a hat in this country, everyone's like, what are you wearing a hat for, you prick? But I did get homesick, right? I did get homesick in LA in the end. And it struck me in a really sort of unusual, unforeseen place. I was in a shop. I was in Macy's in Beverly Hills because I had to go in there to buy a bra, right? I had this dress and I didn't have the right bra for it. So I thought, right, I'll go to a very glamorous shop and I'll get myself a new bra. But I did have a few problems. I was in there for a while because I couldn't find my size. They had all the numbers, but they didn't have all the letters. <laughs> So after a while, this woman came to help me. I say woman, she looked like a shaved cat in a wind tunnel. <laughs> she said, can I help you at all? I said, yes, you can. I said, I'm trying to find a bra for myself and I can't find my size. I'm a 34 double D, sometimes I come up an E. Then she looked put out, from what I could glean from the lack of movement in her face. <laughs> Just a movement in her eye. She was like, we do, we do not stop double D. She looked really pissed off. <laughs> and then I got a bit defensive, because the implication is that my tits are wrong. Then I got <laughs> shitty. I was like, well, hang on. This is America, isn't it? I mean, there are big titted women out there. <laughs> Where are they getting their bras from then? A camping shop? <laughs> So then she calls her colleague across the shop, Amy, this woman here claims to be a double D. Then Amy, this other woman, pops her head up across this store of bras and knickers. And knickers is a word that makes you feel British, knickers. <laughs> no one else says knickers. They're saying lingerie and panties, but we're like, no, it's knickers. <laughs> yeah, Amy, have you got any, like, pop-up ten bras and apple catcher knickers, babe? <laughs> So then Amy pops up, she goes, double D? We've got A, we've got B. I'm like, I know how the alphabet works, Amy. <laughs> she says, are you sure you're double D? I said, yes, I am sure, actually, because I'm from the UK and I was measured by a municipal woman in Marks and Spencers. <laughs> as part of a government campaign. Actually. Because in my country, everyone's wearing slightly the wrong bra size, apparently, so we've all got to get measured by a woman that looks like Mary and Margulies, and then she sends us out into the world. Oh, you're a double D to you. <laughs> so I know what I am, and in that moment, I just wanted to be an m and <laughs> I've never felt a feeling so strong in all my life, because I like to think as Marks and Spencers as the Citizens Advice Bureau of Retail. It's a strong feeling, and I don't really know why, because it's not, is it? I mean, it's changed, of course it has. It's like all the other shops. I mean, I was in there recently. I was going up the escalator to get some knickers. Knickers, packet of five. <laughs> and I was going up to the lingerie department. Knicker department. 
I know some people are listening to this anecdote thinking, oh, this is an interesting anecdote about the purchase of a bra. A couple of other people might be thinking, oh, bras, that's where tits live. But... <laughs> To be honest with you, that is sort of the problem, really, isn't it? Because it's a remedial garment, a bra, on a par with a balaclava or a veruca sock. <laughs> and it's the sexualisation of it that I find irritating. And I was in m and recently and I got in a rights drop because they've gone and done it now. I was going up the escalator to the lingerie department, Nikki department, and there was a massive poster advertising this season's lingerie. What do you mean, seasonal knickers? Who's got seasonal knickers? Who puts away their summer knickers at the end? <laughs> and then, you know, gets them all back out in September. One do not fit like last year, these knickers, don't they? Look at these seasonal knickers. <laughs> and the woman in the poster, I mean, this poster is extremely sexualized, right? She's lolling about in all the gear, with her mouth in a sort of cock receptacle situation. <laughs> As if to say, you know, I have got holes. <laughs> I was like, no, not m &S. This is a sacred place. <laughs> it's medical, isn't it? It's medical, really. I mean, getting measured for one isn't titillating, actually. It's a bit below a high school growth and somewhere above a smear test as an experience. <laughs> It's medical, all right? You wouldn't make a dildo out of a Ventolin inhaler. <laughs> so, yes. And also, I t another thing that I think uh, doesn't help me be a laid-back person is being a parent, right? That is not conducive. I have seen all the stats. Happier people are the childless people. <laughs> Don't clap that. <laughs> One childless man. <laughs> I, uh I mean, I'd love to be a laid-back parent. I'd love to be one of those parents that's like, hey, we're just going to go home and... What do they do? What do those people do? I don't even know what they do. <laughs> hey, we're just going to go home and do apple bobbing and... <laughs> whittling. It's baking. We're going to do baking. <laughs> and I am quite a tired parent. I'm very tired. I mean, all parents are tired, aren't they, all the time. I mean, I've got a lot of makeup on. You can't see how tired I am. This is like a burqa of foundation. <laughs> Some days I wear a burqa, I think, oh, fuck it, I can't work with it. <laughs> There's a lot of women around my way that wear the full burqa. I don't think they're all Muslim women. If I'm entirely honest with you, I don't. <laughs> I think some are women having a bad hair day that are like... I'm going to do the school run in a burqa. <laughs> Get in the car! Get in the car! <laughs> All of the parenting stresses me out, all of it. Like, right from the beginning, when, you, like, when you're pregnant, you've got to think of a name for your kid. You're like, right, we're going to have to name it. That's tradition. We're going to have to give it a name. <laughs> and it's hard to think of a name for a kid, because that's their name. That's going to be their name all their life if it pans out. <laughs> and I'm an indecisive person. I struggle to think of passwords for websites, and you get help for that, don't you? Like, oh, no, weak. <laughs> And names go in and out of fashion, don't they? Some names, they can be in fashion, but they don't come back in. We all know those names. And I tell you a thing that's back in fashion now, and I find it fascinating, is virtue names, right? That is back in fashion, those virtue names. It's a sort of Victorian notion that if you name your kid after a virtue, they might live up to that virtue. But that's risky business, isn't it? That's hubris. I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't... You could call your son Victor. He could end up a bit of a loser. <laughs> Ernest, he could become a bullshitter. Grace is an ever-popular name. I wouldn't risk it. You could call your daughter Grace. She could end up a sort of galumphing oaf. <laughs> Sacking her head on low beams. <laughs> Falling into crockery at dinner parties. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, come on, Grace. Do your laces up, babe. <laughs> Stop farting. <laughs> Prudent, she'll end up lip-deep in debt, wouldn't she? Chastity. <laughs> Although my son is called Frank. Someone said to me, you've done it, innit? it? You've called your son Frank. That's a virtue. To be honest, to be above board, to be trustworthy. I was like, oh, shit, never thought of that. <laughs> He'd end up an estate agent now, would he? <laughs> he's funny, Frank. I think he's funny. I would say that, wouldn't I, because I'm his mum. He's like, funny, my child's funny. Tell a joke. <laughs> Look at 
but I think he's funny, right? I went to pick him up from school the other day. I pick him up every day because they get proper arsey if you don't. <laughs> They do, they ring you. They're like, where are you? I'm like, TK Maxx, where are you? Oh, all right then, yeah. <laughs> so yes, I, uh, I went to pick him up from school and I was late and I wasn't being very late back that day. I was running a bit late, a bit stressed. I had my eldest with me. I had my mate's two kids that were coming back for tea. I thought we'd just get him and go. He's in reception. I was like, right, we'll just get off, yeah? But the teacher stopped me. She went, can you wait, actually? Can we have a quick chat in that, you know, voice? So I had to arrange my face into one of those mum pretending to give a shit faces. <laughs> I said, go on, what's he done? She said, do you want to tell mummy what you did today, Frank, or shall I tell mummy? He's got upset now. He's like, you tell mummy. I'm like, what's he done? What? She said, uh, look, today Frank um, st stuck a digit up the teaching assistant's bottom. <laughs> That's, that's not ideal, is it? <laughs> it's very difficult to know what to do with your face. <laughs> I was going through all the faces in my phone. <laughs> she said, we've talked about bodies, haven't we, Frank? And areas of bodies that we respect. I thought now would be a really bad time to go, <laughs> This is awful. I mean, this is a finger up the TAs. I mean, this is now they're teaching numeracy in primary education now. It's sort of like, oh, if Frank's got one finger up the TAs, ask how many fingers are still on the outside? <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry. I, don't, I mean, it was on your watch. I don't know what you want me to do about it. <laughs> I said, he's a clown. He's a clown. He's just mucking about. He went for the crack, pun intended. <laughs> And he didn't get a laugh, but I got one now, so it wasn't a total waste of time, was it? <laughs>